<laughs> Let's get this party started. The mister just got off work and he is acting silly. Welcome to the Body Chronicles. I'm your host, Kalari GXC. Let me just get the word out on Spoutable, then we will get this party started. Whether the chat fills up or not, because you know how we do. I'm here to rant. I'm here to talk about news, politics, social issues, all that good stuff. And we're going to get started with my favorite person to call out in the world, Muppet Green, because she's on her nonsense yet again, showing the dysfunction that we have in a GOP-led house, which is why I tell you every vote matters. It's all important. You need to know who's representing you, because while I'm not a fan of Speaker Johnson by any step of the any word, I call him the Hydra agent. Y'all know how I feel about Speaker Johnson, but he is the House leader. He is trying to keep the House functioning. And this idiot, who thinks that she's going to somehow ingratiate herself with 45, keeps calling for him to be repealed from the Speaker or, you know, impeached from the Speaker position like they did to the other Yahoo before him. Uh, Took him 14 McCarthy. Took him 14 fucking tries, technically 15 tries. And then Matt, I allegedly sex trafficked Gertz and his little cavalcade of idiots helped get him out. And now Speaker Johnson, who realized that Speaker of the House is a serious job. I have to do this job to the best I can. That means passing bills and negotiating. And he's stuck with a bunch of idiots who don't want to do their job properly. And now he has the Howler Monkey, Mayuri Green, acting like a whole ass fool because she wants to have him step down. She wants him to vacate and wants it to be done in a week. Now, I don't know if I want to play the video because I really don't want to hear the Howler Monkey's voice. This was supposed to be an article, and it is, thank goodness. Uh, can can we get rid of this? I don't even have the sound on. Oop, there we go. <laughs> As Mayori Teller Green advances her plot to bring down Speaker Mike Johnson, Democrats are the only winners in this Republican intra-party fight. No duh. We want Hakeem Jeffries to be the House leader anyway, because we want a functional Congress. But I'm enjoying the soap opera at least. When Representative Mayuri Taylor Green formally filed a motion to oust Speaker Mike Johnson 41 days ago, the Georgia Republican no doubt expected many of her far-right colleagues to rally behind her and join the cause. At least for now, that ain't happening. They, don't, they, they got enough things on their plate, and they want to keep the fucking house functional, but Mayuri never gets the memo. As the week gone underway... <laughs> Only two people have endorsed this shit, too. This is hilarious. As we got underway, many congressional Republicans were characterizing Green's effort as an embarrassing dud, which they preferred to see go away. But she's not going to let that happen when baby throws a tantrum. She's going to keep tantruming until she's blue in the freaking face. Let me scroll down just a bit. <laughs> Uh, so next week, I am going to be calling this motion to vacate, the right-wing congresswoman said. Absolutely calling it. Ooh, scary. <laughs> if Reed follows through on her plan, and it's really difficult to say with certainty whether she will, the outcome appears certain. If every House Democrat voted to oust the incumbent speaker, as they did in October when they did it to McCarthy... Uh, then Johnson would be in real trouble. Unfortunately for Mayari Green, a lot of Democrats want to keep the House functioning, so they've already said that they will probably not even bother with this shit because it's juvenile. But as things stand, it's clear that members of the Democratic minority have a very different plan in mind. Minority leader Hakeem Jeffries and his fellow Democratic leaders issued a statement on Tuesday announcing their intention to shield Johnson from his own radical members and prevent another round of Republican-imposed chaos on this institution. Because Hakeem Jeffries is a leader, and we need to get him into speaker position because this shit is getting old. The Republicans have no loyalty. There is no honor amongst those thieves. So I do not understand why we keep playing with this. The message to Green, in effect, was simple. 
Don't bother with this stunt. You won't have the votes. Duh. This precisely happens when members unable to think more than move at a time, one move at a time, back themselves in the corner with no plan to get out. Because she's been making these dreads for a while. Hey, Beans, dear. Yeah, I had to uh, mute the other uh, streams I was sitting in because I want to just call these heifers out really quick. And you know how I feel about Muppet Green. She got on my nerves. One of the most amazing things about this fight is the degree to which Democrats are the only winner. Green is alienating her allies, many of whom have grown wary of her tiresome antics, and she will emerge from this ordeal, the one who chooses to instigate worse off than she was before. Don't start and I won't be no Muppet. Johnson is likely to survive this fight, but the effort itself will leave him weakened and dependent on the Democrats he opposes. I love this. It's like a good soap opera. Oh my God. This is hilarious because this is what you get when you put these goons in power. The GOP should not be anything if this doesn't show you. What more if the Republicans are able to maintain their loyalty after their majority after this year's elections, it's possible, if not likely, he will struggle to keep his job in the next Congress. Members of the House Democratic minority, meanwhile, are sitting back, presenting themselves as responsible grown-ups, and reinforcing the dynamic that in which Congress top GOP officials turn to them, not radical members of his own conference, to govern for the rest of the year. It's fucking shameful. It's shameful that the fucking House Speaker, who's diehard GOP, has to turn to the Democrats and say, help me, help me govern. My, my group just, they don't want to do anything but fight and, and, and do illegal shit and pad their coffers. I, I don't know what to do. Please help me. For all of Green's over the top tirades about partner, partnership between Johnson and Jeffries, she's the one that's actually helping the House Minority Leader. I fucking love this article. <laughs> Oh my god, I laughed so hard. Bulber is so stupid. I'm going to talk about her in just a moment too because it ties into the main thing about the protest and how it's being blown out of proportion. But another thing I wanted to get to before I did that was the Ohio thing. Let me make sure I got this this one right. Nope, that's the Bulber thing. We're going to hold off on that one because Ohio's playing itself. Don't you has got a uh, town that is still suffering from that derailment? Don't you have an 11-year-old to force to have their rapist baby? What is going on, Ohio? But like all these states, because I brought it up about Alabama a couple of Bonnet Chronicles ago, and a few others that have been playing around, even here in Michigan, there's some districts they want to try to make it harder, but they can't because we've got a Democratic governor and a lot of Democrats running the little counties. So their shenanigans won't fly. The Ohio lawmakers, who are GOP, are proposing another voter ID bill to not only make it harder to do in-poll voting for certain people, but now they want to make it harder for people to qualify for uh, mail-in ballots and absentee ballots, which my family uses. We just mailed off kiddo's first absentee ballot. He was so excited to fill it out and sign and stuff. Absentee ballots when you live in rural areas, especially too, are so helpful. And it drives me fucking nuts that they're trying to introduce laws to make it harder for people who need this. A lot of people who are on the absentee ballot list don't just do it because of the pandemic. There are disabled people. There are elderly people. There are people who would not be able to vote otherwise because of work. This has made it easier for people to express their voices. And of course, the Ohio GOP don't want that. And this law makes no sense. The Ohio voter law could change again under a proposal supported by over a dozen Republicans. You know, there's no Democrats are behind this shit. House Bill 472 would make it tougher for some Ohioans, we know who, to register to vote and cast absentee ballots. Ohio citizens were once able to verify, use a variety of documentation such as utility bills, bank statements to prove their identification for and voter address for the ballot box. That changed last year under a new law requiring voter ID to vote in person. That's fine in person if you need it so badly. Even though a lot of people aren't going to stand in long ass poll lines to fake the funk and vote. And the ones who do are often GOP. They've been busted for it. 
Ohioans have still been able to register to vote and cast mail-in ballots by using the last four digits of their Social Security. What's the problem with that? But HB 472 would remove that option, of course, because they don't want us voting. And I agree, Beans. I so look forward to House Speaker Jeffries. I'm putting that to the stars. I know it's going to happen. He's just sitting back and letting the Republicans embarrass themselves. I love the thought of him working with Speaker Johnson to keep the House functioning. It just shows that it's going to be a smooth transition for him to move in the Speaker. When we get the majority, that's why I tell people, vote, because it fucking matters. Now, under this 470 bill, voters would need to provide a copy of their driver's license or state ID and corresponding number while returning their absentee ballots. That don't make no sense. Once you're registered, they have all that information. So now Ohio wants to add an extra hurdle for people with having them photocopy documentation to mail with the aptitude who's gonna fucking check that why would you add more paperwork for already stressed out poll workers with having to verify a photocopy of a driver's license or state id the shit is dumb and just because you think you're making it harder for some ohioans to vote let me remind you that black voters have put up with your fuck shit for centuries now we will deal with it we will get a cousin who works at like a Kinko's or something to Photoshop our shit. We'll do it at the office. You will not stop our right to vote, Ohio. I'm so glad I don't live in that fucking state, though. But we know who this bill is from. We know who they're trying to stop from voting. It doesn't take a, a magician to understand that when they play around with that shit, like they did in Georgia, making it illegal for people to pass out water and snacks to people, Grandma's down there. Aunties were like, we'll bring our own. We got stadium shares. We don't care. You are not going to stop us. So when Ohio wants to do shit like this, all they are going to do is rally us Dems to support. Even if we have to set up centers so that people can photocopy their shit. I will make sure that that shit's passed around to my friends in Ohio that are even remotely worried about this. Representative Bernard Willis, who needs to be out of a job, Republican from Springfield, nonetheless told his colleagues that this bill is meant to solve issues. Yeah, the issues like them Negroes voting. That currently challenge the integrity of the vote. You want to talk about integrity. Your motherfucking guy, 45, literally housed the insurrection to destroy our dem democratic voting progress. Yous are not fooling anybody. You don't give a fuck about voter integrity. Yous just don't want to lose because we see yous are wasting our fucking time. Ridiculous. Look at that guy looking like a daggone... He should be in a fucking science classroom, not a representative. Of course, Governor DeWine, who keeps making bad decisions for the state, is going to sign off on this. But he doesn't expect to see any statutory changes further ones to Ohio voting procedures while he's governor. Oh, he's disgusting. And of course, that's a lie, because now he's trying to push this. Ohio Secretary of State Frank LaRose, who oversees state elections, has some agreement as well as some questions and concerns. How about we need to stop putting overload on the poll workers with this dumbass shit? You don't want voter integrity. You want to sanction those who want to vote the way they want to vote, and you're not fooling anybody. It's always our top priority to maintain Ohio's reputation as the gold standard for... They're clowns. The gold standard, they say, by requiring people who already get absentee ballots, which you literally have to apply for and be approved by your, because uh, each county has a secretary that handles that, and they have to approve you to get on the absentee ballot list. So now, because too many people have been hep to that and are doing that so that their voice can be heard, y'all want to add an extra fucking burden. But you want to talk about how you have a gold standard of integrity? Go fuck yourself, DeWine. Go fuck yourself. All dozen, dozen of Republicans who wanted this? Ohioans, you need to fucking open your eyes that this shit ain't okay. Your voting integrity shouldn't have to be up for fucking grabs because these yahoos are afraid to lose their jobs. 
if they were really set on a fair govern for your state, they wouldn't be pulling shenanigans like this. It's ridiculous. And we have to be the ones to see, show them that you can't keep doing this to us. You can't keep fucking with our voices because your vote is your voice. And I can't wait till Teller Tuesdays come back. Kiddo graduates in less than six weeks. Once that's done, I'm going to set up the home, well, the, the office area in the kitchen there. And we are going to bring Tell It Tuesdays back because I am going to remind you all what's at stake when they do shit like this. And it isn't. I agree with that, Beans. They are enforcing this shit because they don't want us voting. And you know what I mean by us. Democrats, LGBTQ, any POC, but especially black folks. But this isn't going to stop us. Your shenanigans will be worked around. You keep fucking around, you're going to find out when you lose your jobs. Now, I do have some good news on the Arizona front. I don't have it pulled up. But I will say, thank you, Arizona, for repealing that 1869 abortion law. But you need to do better. Because the fact that we can still harken back in several states to laws restricting women's rights to choose the shit before the fucking Civil War? When is our country going to get this shit together? But tonight we are going to talk about some protests. And I'm going to bring this up that my friend Goodbye Kyle uh, brought up. So I got spoutable loaded here. Because as fundraising and other stuff for the election 2024 has been kicking off. Our media has gone full ham on being completely biased. Ignore the fact that 45, who really should not be his nominee, his party's nominee, but what can they do? Sitting through trial after trial, indictment after indictment, but no, no, look away from that. We have to blame Biden for all the student protests that are going on, we have to give them full coverage so we can show that even though this administration is doing their damn thing, getting shit done, we have to show disarray. We have to get the, the youth mad so that they might sit it out. FYI, the youth always fucking sit it out. That's why black women constantly have to pick up the fucking bag for you idiots. They want to blame President Biden for what's going on in the Middle East and who he as a member... At our country as a member of NATO have to protocols for funding and everything else. Do I like that we are currently giving Israel as much as we're giving them considering all the shit that the Palestinian people are going through right now with the starvation, with the high casualties amongst the civilians, women, children, especially dying to fucking shelling. Fuck no. But do I blame President Biden for something that's not even going on in his country when we have a lot of fucking shit to deal with in our country, but still having to adhere to protocols with the alliance we have with Israel? No, the fuck I don't because I understand geopolitics. Do I think the young people have the right to protest? Of course. There are young Palestinians and even young Jewish people who are protesting what the fuck is going on in Gaza right now. The absolute horrors that are going on. So they have their right. What I want people to understand is that we cannot frame this as dissatisfaction with our president like the media is trying to slant it. Because that's all they got. And as Kyle said, if you turn on the news, these protests seem to be the only thing happening in the country. Another shiny distraction for the GOP and the press to make Biden's tenure look chaotic. Anything to turn attention from the booming economy and steady improvement in people's lives. Except in GOP-run states. I could not have said that anything any better myself, Kyle. It pisses me off because there are so many people, and let me make this a little bit bigger because I know that some people... Like, how, how are you seeing that? I know that some people really want to make this like a Hail Mary pass for Trump and his cronies to try to hammer President Biden with. But the fact of the matter is our economy is stable. Joblessness is still down. We still have people doing the thing here and abroad to make this country more secure. Do we still have problems state by state? Fuck yeah, because we're 50 states trying to act like we're a joint union. But to act like these protests are somehow President Biden's fault is so disingenuous. And I am getting really, really sick of it. But it's like Kyle said, this is what they do. This is how they fucking act. 
And he was responding to the fact that Lynn Holland said, Mike Johnson is facing challenges to speakership, intends to unite the party behind him by cracking down on student protests, which how the fuck are you going to crack down on student protests? Expect to see more college presidents brought in for hearings, which is ridiculous. Republicans like Lauren Barber paying visits to college campuses and attacking higher ed. You had one idiot, Cotton, I believe his name was, talking about protesters need to be handled with violence. Cardi Lake talking about that shit too. The Republicans do not want our union to have free speech unless it's them spreading their hate against anybody different from them. This is dangerous times, and we cannot afford to not take their bullshit seriously. And and speaking of Bobbert, because when I seen this article, I thought it was hilarious. I was like, oh, okay. People are done with her bullshit. Lauren Bobbert go, gets into a scrap with pro-Palestine protesters over a flag that she was heckled with the chance of Beetlejuice. Because if you remember, wasn't that long ago, Little Miss Bobber went to a very public, family-friendly production of Beetlejuice in a Colorado theater group <laughs> and was full-on PDA, making out and hands were where they shouldn't belong, in a fucking Beetlejuice Broadway performance. So, of course, her dumbass went to a campus Decided to start some stuff, played the game of fuck around and find out. And they chased her off, chanted Beetlejuice at her. And this is why I can't be mad at protesters. I get mad at how the news tries to frame the protest, but I love that people are not taking their shit. She went to a university and protesters chanted Beetlejuice, referred to the musical that she got kicked out. And that was funny too. She literally got kicked out of the fucking musical and say, do you know? to make phone calls ma'am you were literally committing a fucking sex act in a crowded theater that was open to all families you are a disgrace a fucking disgrace she attempted to engage was when she heckled there was no engagement she heckled pro-palestinian protesters at george washington university on wednesday and it didn't go well no shit the Colorado Republican was hit with chance for Beetlejuice when she arrived on the campus. This was likely due to the incident in September when Bobber got kicked out of Beetlejuice after her and her date were fondling each other. They were doing more than fondling. We've seen the video. Can't unsee it. It was gross. Bobber visited the college campus with fellow GOP Republicans James Corner, Brian Donalds, and Ann Paulina Luna. All those names you need to remember because they need to be out of work. Because they're harassing college students when they should be passing bills. But, I mean, who needs to legislate when you can go and harass people who are doing the thing, getting an education that you couldn't, Bobbert? Remember that. You're not college-educated heifer. I can't even believe that they bothered those poor students. And let's see if I can get this one right. <laughs> The Sith comes. I love this. <laughs> I love it. Hey, Theo, too. Good to see you, dear. Boo! <laughs> I love this. I love this. <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> oh my god, this is hilarious. <laughs> and I love the Sif music. Like tomorrow's May the 4th. May the 4th, we win all of y'all. It's perfect for the GOP. These students ain't playing with these idiots. Are you going to say something, Beetlejuice? <laughs> How's the beef been going? Oh, gosh. 
Good photo op, Cobra! They play with her. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Hey, Rep Bobert, why did you stand against the anti-Semitism push last year? Why did you stand against an President Biden's anti-Semitism push last year? Yeah, ask Bobert, her that. Why did you stand against an Biden's anti-Semitism push last year? Because he thinks he's the president. Because he thinks he's the president. That's why these kids aren't playing. Free, free Palestine. Them kids are not playing with these GOP fuckers. And the fact that this idiot bothered to go to their campus thinking that she was going to do a photo op and they were going to talk shit about how they're going to tough line or hard line these kids out of protesting. No, the fuck you're not. Just like you didn't mess with TikTok when they fucked up some of Trump's rallies, booking seats and stuff so that it looked empty. I love the youth sometimes. I don't fuck with TikTok, but I do love that they did that. I need you to understand that these young people, they want our government to focus where they can, helping the civilians of Gaza, helping the people of Palestine so that there is a two-state accord so that they can stop living in horror. But they are not going to take crap from the GOP who don't want them to be able to protest properly. And that's why I say... I want the youth to be able to speak their voice, have their voices, speak their truth, and protest. It's a fundamental right for us to be able to protest. Not insurrect, not impede on votes, but to actual protest. When we see injustices in the world, when we see injustices on our soil. But what we ain't going to do is act like this is President Biden's fault. What's going on overseas is horrible. He has already had words with Netanyahu. A lot of people want Netanyahu out. We need capable leaders here and abroad. Most of us can agree that Hamas should not be leading Gaza and Palestine right now. Even Palestinians are sick of their tactics because war only hurts the civilians. So... When I see our media framing these protests as something to ding the, our current administration with, they're not fooling us. And I do not want to see these students' voices nipped in the bud. But if we allow the GOP to run us in the theo fascist theocracy, that is what's going to happen. And they don't speak for every Christian in America. Not every Christian in America wants people to be voiceless. Not every Christian in America wants people to suffer here and abroad. So we need to stop allowing the GOP to speak for those of us who understand that we don't want to see suffering. We just want to see a peaceful accord when we can stop seeing bloody children, when we can stop seeing mothers having their babies pulled from their womb because they were shelled on and died. The shit I've seen over the week that's going on in Gaza and all of Palestine right now is heartbreaking. And as you notice, the pro-Palestinians are not just Muslim students. They're students from all walks of life who realize this is not okay. There was a young Jewish student asking Bobber, why did you oppose President Biden's anti-Semitism bill that would help those on these campuses who are faced with hate crimes for their ethnicity and faith? She didn't want to answer those questions. We have got to stop putting these yahoos in charge of our Congress. They are holding us back. And exactly, Beans, you have to have absolutely no empathy whatsoever. And I'm a fucking sociopath. So I don't understand these people that go, well, it's not in our neck of the woods. But yet they'll want to ding President Biden for shit that he's not in control of. But we're going to lighten this up just a little bit before I wrap up with a little bit more Cindy Villa. You know how I love her. She gets the TikTok G's, so I don't have to be on TikTok. And, of course, another person decided to be out of pocket on a podcast and put it up on TikTok. So we're going to get this rolling because, of course, I got some words. I only watched a couple of seconds of it. I was like, oh, yeah, I'll react to this. Because you know how I feel about these people on TikTok. They have way too much going on for them, and I'm sorry. I had gardening stuff to do earlier today. I have a book to get finished. 
Got things going on. So I I could never be on TikTok reason 11 billion. But we're going to fire up some Cindy Villa and then wrap this up because it, the sun's still shining. I'm going to go out and check and make sure nobody's fucking with my containers. We're still waiting on some stuff for the greenhouse. It's driving me nuts because I want to get it up so that I can get the containers into that and start putting up the shelves. I'm excited, though. I don't want to go on a gardening tangent, but hopefully soon I'll be able to start vlogging that, too. Hey guys, how are you all doing? Exactly. It's your girl Cindy it and I'm back to again today that. with another cheese. I trust you guys are doing great. Oh, Thank you great. so much for clicking to watch this video. So I just wanted to talk about this video today. As you can see, it is a podcast video. Now one of them made a comment. Okay, this is called D-E-I in the cockpit, which is already a really stupid name. And I believe the Renee lady is the one that uploaded this from whatever podcast they did. So I don't want anybody bother Renee Papa Ham because they just re-uploaded it. If anything, it's the D E uh D E I in the cockpit, which I already said a couple of Bonnet Chronicles ago. These people want to call anything black, diverse, equity inclusivity hires it's their new word for affirmative action so be wary of people like this these blanks that like to fucking slide in the little racist overtones with coded words we already know what you're saying you idiots but i'm gonna let this play comment that people oh are and their reacting. email freedom so one of them says always with the freedom they don't want a freedom pilot a for black us. pilot he's gonna ask boy is he qualified like he's gonna ask questions if this black pilot is qualified to fly a plane so that statement didn't sit well with a lot of people it's not sitting well with me either sorry for the quick pause but asking whether we're qualified when we have to be four times as qualified to get into most positions from somebody who puts on his daddy suit and acts like a big podcast bro who is even if he did get through college, probably got it through nepotism. You could fuck right off with the qualified things. It's like those idiots when we were on Twitter. You remember that, Beans. When they showed those pictures of the black doctors that graduated. There was a whole ass area of them. And, of course, these people wanted to quali do the qualified thing and got ratioed to heaven. Matter of fact, I started... De <laughs> I designed the Hope the Ratio was worth a banner because of that issue it was so ridiculous these are black doctors you know how hard medical school is and of course you get these races to come out and say well i'm sure they didn't qualify or they were just passed through and we ratioed them to high heaven and i still use that i hope the ratio was worth a banner because fuck anybody that says shit like that i am Working on the sister novel, The Axiom Field 2. I am so excited. I wanted to give them a proper ending, basically. There's still side stories that I can write from different characters as well. But this will be the proper ending for my main characters of the Axiom series. And I am so excited. I have been working on the rough draft for a while. And I'm hoping to get everything finished right before my birthday again. Axiom Wolf has been helping me edit it too. So I'm very excited about the second book. I am just, but I'm going to get back to this because I could talk about the book all the time. And I'm doing a writer vlog now on, on YouTube, so I will be giving more tips and tricks on that as well. We are going to see a few stitches, but I'm going to show you this video first. And of course, you all know how we do it here. I'm going to show you some screenshots of comments so you guys can see what all the people said about this video. Yeah. Please check the video out. I'm, I'm sorry. Sure. If I see a black pilot, I'm going to be like, boy, I hope he's qualified. Well, well, that's the you wouldn't have done that. You wouldn't have. You no, wouldn't have done that not, before. That's not an immediate. No, you wouldn't that's have done that before. That's not who I am. That's no. not what I believe. It is, it the is who you are. It is totally who you are. It's who your granddaddy was and his granddaddy was. You see somebody with my complexion, you assume that we would not be qualified, even though you have to go to pilot school. You have to clear hours of flight time, including the virtual flight time that they do, just like every other fucking pilot. The fact that you try to say that's not who I am. But you legitimately say that if you see a black pilot, you automatically think they're not qualified. That is exactly who you are. Freaking snow roaches. They get on my nerves. I don't care. Reality, the left has but created. I, I, I'm, I'm... No. So is the left's fault that you're racist? How's that math? 
How is it that people who, because I'm pragmatic, like I said, I am a Democrat voter, but I am very pragmatic. I want people to get the job done first and foremost. But the fact that you're blaming the left for your racism is why I can't take ass clowns like this seriously. Own your fucking racism like your fucking ancestors did at least, you scaredy cat bigots. Now, this is exactly what we are talking about when we say black people live right exactly. in white people's heads. But so obviously, this video was posted on the internet. Like thousands illogic. of people watched this video coming from a white man. Like, what message are you passing? Are you trying to tell people don't believe in... They're passing the same message that their great greats and their greats and probably their mamas and daddies did. That when you see somebody who looks like me, you have to question their qualifications. One of the things I say when I went to the hospital downstate a few weeks back, I was so happy that not only did I have female doctors, but they were black female doctors. Not only did they listen, they were helpful. All the doctors were. But it just gave me an odd sense of comfort to see people who look like me handling it. Now, my primary care physician is a white Christian woman. She is the sweetest lady. She, I'm going to see her on Monday for a follow-up. I have a Indian doctor who's a specialist that I follow up with on Tuesday. My doctors are diverse. I have never once looked at either one of them and asked them what they qualified to do what they do. What drives me nuts is that there's a level of privilege that some people have, and it's not everybody, but there's enough of you fuckers who think that you have the right to question anybody in a professional standpoint. And the fact that you named your podcast DEI, which I had said a few Bottom the Chronicles back, because there was an article written about that being their new code word for black, black in any professionalism, because we already hepped up to the affirmative action. I had to hear that a lot when I worked corporate. It was not fucking funny then, it's not fucking funny now. No matter how much you switch the code, we will always know your racist dog whistles, idiots. A black pilot? Yep. Now, this is exactly what we are talking about. It's sick like, no portraying They black use people, that to lessen like, us. They don't know anything. You are trying to tell us that a white pilot is better than a black pilot. Now, I'm... And even to get past that, because there are so many of these fuckers, like Chantel, not to bring her up a lot, but she likes to act like she's the smartest person in the room because she did a whole week of college and then dropped out. I have a degree. I didn't even want the degree that I got a degree in, but my family was very adamant that we got higher education. I don't even use the degree I got, but I got a fucking degree. The fact that this heifer, legitimately because she lacks melanin, will look at somebody like me and assume that I couldn't do it, is that attitude. And it's all over the place with certain people. They assume that because you're black that you will not succeed with they walk the path. And I'm here to tell you, not only do we do it, but we do it better because 90% of my demographic go to college as a finish, honey. So yeah, just saying. I want you to correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. So before you become a pilot, are you not supposed to acquire the license? Are you yep. not supposed to do some trainings, you yep. know? study about it, write some exams before you would be certified to fly. To interrupt it just again, just, just to get this out there, some of the more modern day piloting, including safety features, a black pilot and his black history, you can look it up. There's Black History Unleashed that did a good thing on him and that. The whole idea that we don't have the right to fly and we can't be pilots. One of the first female pilots was a black woman too. Look it up if you need to. There is plenty of documentation on our contribution to aviation over the years and throughout the centuries. The fact that these idiots can take one look at a black pilot who has had to go through the train and probably had to deal with prejudice on top of that and still act like they're not qualified, get all the fucks out of here. I a plan. So seeing a black pilot, it means it the, is. the guy is certified it or is the woman is certified to I really fly get a plane. With it now. now, what is even saying? It is the fact that he said this 
in a podcast video where a lot of people watch I doubt they the get video. A lot of people and then it. what message are you trying to convey to people about black people? And he's just speaking to his fellow racists. That's why I laughed at last week, that idiot talking about, you've never seen a Klansman. Man, they don't wear sheets, at least up north. They wear badges. They wear uniforms that in, in professions. They, they wear teacher's outfits. Don't play in our faces about who's racist and who watches crappy-ass podcasts like that. It's pretty clear who you were speaking to. So, in other words, you know, anytime we see a white pilot, we should be like, Mm, we are safe. I mean, a white nope. person is going to fly this plane, so we are... And I remind you, there was a young German man, and they all tend to identify as Caucasian when when they're German. No offense to Germans who are not. These are smaller populace. And he was going through severe clinical depression. This was about, I think, about eight or nine years ago. And because nobody paid attention to him because they thought he was just a safe white guy, Crashed a whole ass fucking jet with people on it into a mountain range. Killed them all. So, no. If I was going to typecast anybody as not being safe pilot-wise, I'm beside I in the not melanated because they get to have clinical depression and nobody pay attention to that bullshit. Just saying. We are cool. We are good. I mean, <sighs> what a wow. Now, obviously, this yep. video didn't sit well with a lot of beans. people. I have put together a few stitches. Let's just hear from them. And of course, I'm going to show you some call random out a motherfucker before Please, I, you check know me, I ain't out. got no filter. Wait, if I see a black pilot, I'm going to be like, boy, I hope he's qualified. Well, that this line of thinking makes absolutely no sense to me. Exactly. Do you really think an airline is going to hire an unqualified pilot? Exactly. An unqualified pilot probably has a higher chance of causing a crash, which causes damage, which means you got to pay for the damage around the crash and or the damage to the plane and or replace the plane. Now, let's say people got injured and or died. You probably got to pay for those lawsuits. Not to mention the bad PR you're going to get when people realize that an unqualified pilot caused that crash. Bad PR means nobody wants to fly your airline. See what I mean when I say it makes no sense? Most of the people you see in those types of jobs are qualified and they probably were the best applicant. But let's pretend that they used affirmative action. You do realize affirmative action is just them picking from taking a pile of applicants who are qualified, they have the training, they have the experience, they have the education, people who are qualified, and then picking from that list of applicants. They don't just, they don't just go to some random neighborhood and find a woman or an African American or Asian or whatever, and then just grab them and go, oh, you don't actually need an education, just come work for us because we have to fill a quota. Exactly. So yes, your pilots, your doctors, your Lawyers, your nurses, etc., are all qualified. Now, whether or not they're good at their job is a different story, but you know what? You find people bad at this job who are all races and all genders. Exactly, hey. young lady. I get so annoyed. Really, man? Dude, no, I, I don't need to be famous. I, I, I don't want any help with that. The fact that I even have to say something like that. Ay, ay, ay. Now you're going to make me waste my time because I don't like bots. You need to see yourself out the door. And don't waste my time no more. I don't need to be famous. I'm here talking about, you know, fun stuff, interesting stuff. And you get this, hey, you want to be famous? Bitch, no, I don't. I'm a writer. I don't need to be famous. I want my work to be famous. And you can't help me with that either. Good Lord. But back to the video. And what that young lady said is true. Competency is a whole different matter, but most people are competent in their job. What they're getting all mixed up is whether people are fucking qualified simply based on their skin color. And once again, Mr. Podcast Dude, that's a racism. You did a big racism. No, you that's wouldn't have done that who before. I am. That's no. not what I believe. It is the reality the left has but created. I, I, I'm, I'm... 
he that's said. That's the same beings. I that don't is need the to reality know the fuck that the who left has created. Just know my work. That's it. They are so unable to look at themselves with any kind of like introspection or even reflect. Like they can't reflect on that. At all. They blame the left for their Bro racism. Bro literally said, "If I see a black man." In the cockpit, I'm going to wonder if he's qualified. It is extremely difficult to get into that program. And the fact that he just said something so blatantly racist, you can see how the co-host dudes looked at the camera and they said, that's the reality that the left has created. No. That's the reality that the left is showing to themselves. Holding up a mirror is not a reality that the left created. It's a mirror, bro. Mirror. This is how you behave. That's what you're saying. Just because you're unable to, like, cope with your own racism and bullshit is not the left's fault for pointing it out. What the actual fuck? I'm sorry, if I see a black pilot, I'm going to be like, boy, I hope he's qualified. Idiot. And when we see you, we hope you don't have a gun. We hope you're not having a tough day. We hope you're not cheating on your wife and you feel like annihilating her, the kids, the dog, her mama, her cousin. We'd hope that, you know, you're having a good day when we see you because we fear y'all. Every day, y'all. I don't fear them to interrupt that young lady as much as I know statistically speaking. I'm a more chance of danger from a certain demographic having a bad day. Like what happened at that spa in, in Georgia where the dude was just having a bad day and murdered several Asian people who were just minding their own fucking business. Like the school shooters who have bad days and decide to take it out on their fucking fellow students and peers. We have one. He's going to jail for life and his parents do it 10 to 15 years in Oxford, Michigan. So yeah, y'all are the ones that we should be side-eyeing because when you have bad days and have guns in the mix, a lot of people go bye-bye. Just saying. I'll prove how dangerous y'all are, but you fear of us. Charlie, what creditations do you have since you're afraid of black pilots? Mm-hmm. What are you flying around in? What are you piloting? Besides racism, and probably a really small beef. <laughs> when I see a black pilot, I'm so when we see white people, honey, we, we shiver in fear. I don't shiver in we fear. See I just go the other when way. We see y'all. Fear. Real fear. Real scared. We know y'all are unhinged. I have to know Any minute, them now. Everyone's dead because y'all. <laughs> Sorry, if I see a black pilot, I'm going to be like, boy, I hope he's qualified. Mm -mm. Well, that's the you. This is a stitch of a stitch, so watch the original video because he makes some good points. But something that he doesn't bring up, um, you still have to graduate. Affirmative action, things like that, things that right-wing conservatives hate. I'm going to pause the brother right there because he says he brings up some good points. And exactly, look at my body. And welcome to Chad, dear. Why would he... They put this shit out there just to be controversial because they know nobody's going to watch that stank-ass podcast without saying dumb racist shit like this. But this is about the man talking about they made some good points. I don't want to hear any of their points. They literally said that they look at a black pilot and wonder if they're qualified. Nah, nah, brother man. Nah, nah, nah. Don't be an apologist for these bigots. I always hate that because I know some of us feel like when we're around certain spaces, because I live in the rural area now, that you have to lessen yourself. And let me tell you, baby, nah, it's the year 2024. We don't do that. I don't give a fuck if you look at me. I had the motherfucker the other day because we went down to um the other town because we wanted to go into Myers. And I'm just sitting there minding my business, you know. And this guy with a Trump bumper sticker, just me mugging to his car, looks at me and I'm just like, okay. My purple hair is out. I'm just loving life. He's looking like he just hates the world, just pushing the cart, just mad. And I'm like, Okay? I don't care how angry this person is. I am not going to cower. I am not going to shrink down. I am not going to act like they're angry faces and doing anything to me. Motherfucker look constipated. 
I am here. This is my town now, too. You don't have to like it, but you ain't going to do shit about it. Point blank, period. I don't care anymore. I am done holding myself to, uh, I need to not look these people in the eye. I need to be fear. Nah, fuck out of here. I'm done with their attitudes. You can be pro anything you want, but what you're not going to do is treat me out of my face. I'm human. I pay good money just like everybody else. I pay my taxes just like everybody else. And I'll shop wherever the fuck I want. Point blank, period. And I'm starting to see the next town over a lot more people that look like me are moving up in there. I think that's why Brother Man was looking all angry. <laughs> oh, well. People like it. It's nice and rural. It's peaceful and quiet. You can get a lot of shit done up here. I'm telling you. Whether you get into the program. And that's why criticisms of affirmative action are that people who get in with lower test scores have a higher rate of dropping. Exactly. Uppity, bougie, think you're better. In New York, I had a motherfucker literally try to firebomb my house because we didn't belong in his neighborhood. We were the only black family on, in the neighborhood and he didn't want us there. People act like racism is just a Southern thing and it is sure as hell not. And it comes from every which way when you're black and it's sickness. It even comes internally sometimes and it's sickness. What we cannot do is continue to let these people tell us that we're less than, that we aren't qualified for stuff. It's the reason why I made the BHM in my story an allegory for us because so many people want to monsterize us, dehumanize us. And yes, like every de demographic, every ethnicity, we have our good, bad, and in between. But yet we are constantly vilified and made less than. They literally had fields of eugenics saying that we can't learn the same way white people can. No, we learn better. A lot of your scientific, technological needs, it's, you don't even need to study it on February. It's all documented, the contributions we have made to science, technology, medicine. But these people still want to play in our faces acting like we're not intelligent enough. We're not qualified enough. And I, I don't ascribe to that bullshit. I refuse. Out, but those who graduate went through the same program that the other pilots had to go through. Exactly. So remember, being stupid is a prerequisite to being a bigot. Yep. It's racism. It's, it's racism. I'm sorry. Exactly. If I see a black pilot, I'm going to be like, boy, I hope he's qualified. Well, Dumb bigot. The it's literally just racism. That's that's like racism. There's no other word for it. It's literally racism. You don't look at any other pilot. You don't look at a white pilot who's in the pilot seat with a badge, uniform, and think, I hope he's qualified. Why is he in the cockpit if he's not qualified? That's ra It's just racism. Yeah. It's, it's racism. I'm sorry, if I see a black pilot, I'm going to be like, boy, I hope he's qualified. Well, that I talk a lot in real life about the importance of like black doctors and that lawyers like and Janine. nurses and pilots and all those things. And I think it's time, i be honest, that the reason why I want black people in all these positions has nothing to do with representation and everything that to not do be with a cousin of my how it looks hilarious like my cousin, I think too. it is that it makes white people nervous because... If, if you're in New a York, person, I'm going to have to call her later and that you're afraid to get on a plane because our asses are too old for TikTok. I'm just getting qualified for their job. She's only what like 2 years younger than me. If black people come together and put in the work, we can scare white people from coming outside ever. Yeah, apparently we're the boogie man. Apparently us being in a professional position scared them. So let's all get professional jobs. I already did the corporate life. I can't do that shit again. That shit, the microaggressions, the are you qualified to be here when I was literally just a corporate bookkeeper, the fucking jokes, the oh, here's our affirmative action hire. That shit got old. And it's the microaggressions that literally erode your health and your soul. So I'm kind of glad that I'm not going through that again. Cindy's just sitting there paused. So I'm going to like skip ahead. I because I know her brain is just like, the fuck am I doing with my life watching these stupid racist stuff? I'm sorry. Stuff. If I see a black pilot, I'm going to be like, boy, I hope he's qualified. Every time I hear him well, say this, it's just really dumb. Why is it always people who look like this? 
always have something to say in trying to disqualify a black person in a position of some kind of authority. I don't know, sister girl. I don't know. I know this man that looks like he has a lowercase face isn't talking <laughs> about the qualifications of black pilots. This is coming from a man who looks like he belongs in the Little Bits commercials off of Rick and Morty. <laughs> I, my, my man is on TikTok. Too. I can't. My attention span would be taken up as it is. And YouTube's already been doing that. So I just leave TikTok alone. I, I feel like it's for the young. But if you're on it, look at my body. I hope you're enjoying yourself. I would get nothing done because I'd be all day stitching stupid shit like this. Calling these people out for their ridiculousness. She said low case face though. I'm done. Oh my gosh. I love this. This coming from a man who belongs you to don't a mess with black Dominicans, they will drag your ass. Most of them fill. don't know how to wash past their knees. <laughs> exactly, Use a wash same. rag, mm -hmm. or at least a loofah. Mm -hmm. Some of them don't believe in bathing but at all. But you want it's to crazy. disqualify black people for being pilots? Mm -hmm. You don't believe that they're qualified enough? Tell us more. Or say less. I'm, I'm glad with them saying less. I'm okay. Please say less. But racism is dead. Oh, Nikki I love Haley stirring. Up. I love stirring up trouble. This country my has body. never been racist. I almost. But they keep on ousting them. They keep on. Yeah, they not only they keep on ousting themselves, but they literally blame other people for their racism. You can't make that make sense. I almost want to go back on my Twitter. I have it locked down because Twitter's a cesspool, and I'm waiting for Musk to cut his losses and sell it to somebody else. Preferably not. So right, right wing, but it is what it is. So I'm on spoutable for now. But I do sometimes miss cussing and dragging the fool out. And you can only get that good drag on Twitter. But for now, nope, I'm letting it collect digital dust. But I'm telling you, Twitter days, I, I, I skirted so many times. I have I got timed out a few times for taking a bit too far. And I calmed down. But then I learned how to drag people a little bit more classily. And it was a lot of fun. And then he went and ruined my playground. So until Musk is no longer our owner, digital dust. Telling on themselves. Yep. These are not isolated incidents. No, it's not. These are not isolated in any way, shape, or form. This happens daily. Yep. Every minute, someone is saying something outrageously racist. And stupid and ignorant. Yep. From people who look like that that big head, small face looking ass. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you. <laughs> but this country ain't racist. Mm. Y'all have a good day. I'm going to sleep. So I took some screenshots and I love to of see comments her as usual too. so you guys can see what I'm other people sure said about that hours, video. Yeah. Please pause to read the comments wow. if you what? want to. If now, you're a black pilot, you probably had to work his ass off more than a white person to get the job. So in reality, he's overqualified. Plan, mm -hmm. It is very impossible for Crazy you when they say this to for pilots and doctors when they have to go through so much training to get certified. What did Whatever you just this say? guy Imagine said making a statement video. like that, still walking into a commercial airline to fill a hundred <sighs> other people. Wow. I feel the same way. Shut up, Joseph. Anyways, let me know your take in the comments, guys. And thank you all so much for watching. I'm mentally ill and the plane and dropped out. Come. See, I said that shit. I said that shit because I brought up that German pilot that literally did that shit. He was mentally ill. They kept passing it and ignoring all the red flags and warning signals. And the motherfucker flew a plane into a mountain to kill people himself. So if we're going to play that game of, I hope they're qualified. Well, I hope they're not having certain ideations. Because when we see non-melanated people, we have to worry if you're having a bad day. You're going to road rage us. You're going to pull out a gun and shoot us at the movie theater, grocery store, school, church, whatever. And now we have to worry, along with Bo and Crass falling the fuck apart and their whistleblowers dying mysterious deaths, that these pilots might just have a bad day and decide, we're going to dip the plane into something. See, we can play that game. You want to go hard bigot? You want to act like my people can't be qualified for stuff? I'm going to remind you the demographic that causes the most death and destruction for no apparent reason, but y'all are having a bad day and you feel like the country is being taken from you. It's all bullshit. And until we start to let go of these 
ignorant hates, the tendrils that wrap around and just suck the life out of your soul. We're going to keep seeing doofuses like this with this shitty ass podcast. Even this fucking co-host were like, brah. And then they threw in that, the, no, it's the left's fault that you're acting like this. You weren't always like this. And him, I, it's not the person I am. Apparently it is. Apparently it's exactly who you are and you put it out into the internet, which is forever. So I hope you enjoyed your little non-clan-wearing, clan-rope-wearing sit-down session. But the rest of us now know that you're a bigoted idiot. But I'm going to get ready to wrap this up. Thank you all so much for watching. We will be back next Friday with another Bonnet Chronicles. I'll be back tomorrow with a Bonnet Reacts on YouTube. Got some heifers to call out. It's going to be fun. Got some favorite editors to highlight and stuff. There might even be some new contenders to the mix because there are so many log houses just vying to be the new new. I'm not going to cover that rosy chick though. She kind of irks me. She's another one hoping for bad health, which I don't get. I like being in good health. I like being able to be outside, getting my garden done, getting in, in and out of town, and just doing the thing. But it is fun to call out those heifers that fake the funk on their weight loss journey. So if you want, join me tomorrow. I will have some fun on YouTube starting at 1 p.m. EST. But for now, I'm going to go make some dinner for Axiom Wolf and I. Y'all have a good night and a great weekend if I don't see ya. <laughs> And I did. I love Twitter. Look at my body. That was my hangout spot for real. And I'm going to get bouncing and I will see y'all soon.